I don't know. It was brutal, man. I don't. I was like, it's uh, it was so funny to see him out of bands would show up and just be like, yes, right, no. I'm like, this is live radio, motherfuckers. Punch yeah. it up. Hey, Wade, how are you, man? Good. How about you? I'm doing well. I appreciate you doing this. Thank you so much. No problem. Can you hear me all right? Yeah, yeah it sounds good. Cool. Sweet. Uh, you actually have uh, been on our podcast before, but my brother-in-law is the one that interviewed you. Okay. Yeah, this is uh, about a year, maybe two years ago at this point. It was when COVID has, was going <laughs> full force. So. Well, it's good we could cycle back around. Yeah, I'm super excited to talk to you because obviously Alexis on Fire has a new record coming out, the first one in 13 years, I believe, right? Yeah, crazy, eh? So cool, so cool. Well, this, I'm Adam, and this is about you and your journey in music. Uh, we kind of already ho heard your story in the first uh, time we chatted, but I want to kind of recap a little bit. I have some follow-up questions, if that's cool, and then I want to talk to you about the new music and the new, the new record. Sounds good. Awesome, awesome. So, uh, first off, born and raised. Uh, where were you born and raised? St. Catharines, Ontario, Canada. I'm here right now. Cool. <laughs> what was it like growing up there? <laughs> uh, it's a yeah, it's a pretty small city. Um, not a lot going on, um, which I feel like. Uh, it's probably why, uh, you know, like everyone in the band uh, kind of like got so into the things that we got into, you know, mm -hmm. like, uh, yeah, I kind of often wonder if I was like, if I grew up in Toronto or, or somewhere else, like if I, yeah, I don't know if I would have obsessed over the same things I did when I was younger. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I don't know. It's a, it's a small city and like, uh, so spent most of my time like skateboarding and playing music mm -hmm. and uh and um yeah we uh i'd say all the guys in the band are kind of uh you know people that i've met that were in other local bands that kind of were the people that were as passionate about it as i was mm -hmm. and um and yeah we've been it's crazy yeah this is like the 20th year of us doing it i know the real trip so cool though so cool i i remember from the interview i, I just watched it recently so um with with my brother that you did uh, you said you had a guitar teacher that you uh named dennis that was kind of a big influence on you growing up that you had met around 12 years old yeah it was it was a pretty huge thing i mean like he uh he was pretty much the only person i think that was really positive about music for mm -hmm. me like i'd say everyone else kind of uh you know my music teachers in school and uh um, just to kind of like, uh, you know, my, my folks and uh, everyone just kind of like tried to dissuade me from doing music, tried to be like, kind of quit fucking around and do your homework. Sure. <laughs> um, and, uh, and yeah, like the only person that actually was like, you can do this, you can do this for a living, like you can make music your life was like, you know, like 17 year old metalhead guy that was like my guitar teacher. Mm -hmm. um, and uh yeah, I mean, I think he probably had more profound effect on my music career than anybody else. Mm -hmm. Even just then, yeah, I don't know. Just like having one person tell you that it's possible um, is, a, is a really important thing. Yeah, I mean, that's massive. Uh, going, I, well, I'm curious because you said that your you know, family and parents were like, yeah, you know, get a real job kind of thing, do your homework. Um, bef but like, what were you playing uh, before that? Was, was a guitar the first instrument you had learned or were you, it sounds like you were in music classes prior to that. Yeah, I mean, I just, you know, like doing music class, like in school and stuff like that. But uh, I played piano when I was younger, like kind of uh, just for a couple of years, didn't really take to it. But uh, yeah, when I got a guitar, that's when I kind of like really just like, zoned in on it and kind of stopped doing everything else sure yeah was uh, um but uh no go ahead no no you go ahead i don't know what i was gonna say <laughs> i was gonna say do you have any uh siblings or was there anyone else musical in your household your parents at all no there's like no one my grandmother 
my grandmother played piano and harmonica Mm -hmm. um but like no one else in my family uh plays music in any capacity so i think it was it was not something that uh yeah that anybody really understood Sure. Yeah. I was going to say, it sounds like you're taking, not only is music a huge risk, but it was something that no one else was pursuing or had pers- pursued in in your, in your family. So like for me, I would think like my parents always wanted me to get a real job, you know, get a job that's like, you know, uh, something secure, you know, some job security. And I, and I come from radio and I, and I love that. I saw that you did radio for a handful of years in, in Canada, didn't you? Yeah, 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 it was, uh, it was cool. I like, um, after I kind of like, uh, you know, Alexis toured for, you know, 10 years, like pretty much nonstop. And then we kind of slowed things down. I toured for like five years, really intense with Gallows. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and then I thought I need to get off the road. I'm like losing my goddamn mind. Sure. Um, and so, yeah, I got like, a. I got a radio show in Toronto and I did that for like about five years and um, it was cool. It was like, uh, yeah, I enjoyed it. Like kind of just like being involved in music in another capacity. Mm-hmm. It's kind of funny though. I thought, you know, oh, when I start when I started doing it, I thought I'll be good. I'll like, I'll, I'll like interview bands and, you know, I can just steer away from all those things that I just like all that cringy shit in interviews over the years that I've been asked. I could avoid all that. And like, hands down the thing I hated the most was like interviewing bands <laughs> <laughs> I don't know it was brutal man I don't I was like it's uh it was so funny to see a amount of bands would show up and just be like yes right no I was like this is live radio motherfuckers punch yeah. it up <laughs> <laughs> I love that you said that because I did alternative radio for 17 years before really just full on taking care uh, over on this podcast really COVID kind of was the reason for that I mean everyone was home and artists I was able to chat with that were trying to push records or doing things that they couldn't tour and support uh but uh hearing this is that's why I wanted to start a podcast like this because I love the deep conversation and not the stupid questions like I grew up in San Diego and I remember just like the morning show questions like what's your favorite burrito in town and like the morning show people like having these you know yeah. thinking that they needed to be the personality of the interview and I'm like just no one's yeah listen let the you know talk to the artist they're, they're the one that you know has the information people want to hear but anyway that's so funny that <laughs> you said that about the cringy uh uh, random radio interviews that I'm sure you had to do a million times throughout your career as well. So hopefully this doesn't become that. No, I mean, well, first <laughs> of all, you don't have the radio voice. So we're already off to a good start. Wait. What's up with that voice? <laughs> it's crazy, know. man. Like, yeah. like you just like, you put someone in front of a microphone and they just start doing that voice. Right. It's insane. No, it's, it's funny. Crazy. That's like one of the hardest things I had to learn in radio was like, everyone was like, be yourself. And that's the hardest thing to do. It's like, what do you mean be yourself? Because I'm trying to mimic people that I listened to growing up. And then like at one one day, I just kind of clicked. I'm like, yeah, why don't I just talk and be me? Uh, but it's it was such a hard thing to do in radio. Well, it's a very difficult thing, I think. And just, you know, even like, uh, it's funny, you know, I, I I think when I was doing the radio show, I tried to put like, I tried to put a bunch of people on the air, like that were like in my life. You know what I mean? Right. Like, like, I was like, I was like, it'd be funny if I just, whenever I was like talking about hockey, like I put my dad okay. on the radio and just like, he's like such a funny, like charismatic, like ball buster, like psycho, like old guy. And, um, I try and talk to him on the radio and he'd, he'd start to, he'd start behaving so peculiar. Right. Like you couldn't, you could, this, you can't make people act normal when they do it. It's really strange. It really, it really is. Um, well, not to go off on radio anymore, but I just thought that was so cool that you, you did it. And well, actually real quick, last question. Were you able to program your own show or did you have to play with the, the program director had put together for you? No, I didn't get to program a fucking thing. So you had to play whatever records were already scheduled in there? Yeah, there was like a little bit of stuff that they like let me do, but uh, um, yeah, it's just not the way the radio works, unfortunately. No, totally, totally. I didn't know because yeah. you have obviously notoriety, and and you were you 
you were doing things that they maybe would have thrown you a bone and be like, yeah, yeah, wait, you can play, you know, an hour of whatever the hell you want to play. But it sounds like they, they nah, didn't care. You know, like, the last, <laughs> like one of them, like short, shortly before I stopped working there, like uh, um, Lemmy died. Oh, yeah. I remember like I was on the air. I ran, into, too. I ran into the program director when I was on my way in the building. and I was like, hey, like I'm going to like do a bunch of motorhead stuff at the beginning of the show and i was i was covering for the like afternoon drive person that day. okay and then he was like yeah well you can talk about that but you can't play motorhead and i was like what do you mean and he's like yeah you can't play it like it's drive time and i was like i walked into the radio station i thought maybe i should maybe today would be a really good day for me to just quit on the air <laughs> and just play all maybe i should just play all of overkill and then quit on the air and uh, um, I didn't end up doing that. I was going to say, uh, if you did that, that would have been so epic. You're like, okay, let me yeah. die. I'm going to play this whole record. Hopefully it doesn't <laughs> get stopped, but I'm going to play the whole album and I'm out. <laughs> Should have done it. Sure, done. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Okay, so sorry. Going back to you, you guitar at twelve, and then um, you started a band, uh, bef obviously before Alexis, but uh, the the band you started prior to that. Like, um, how old were you, and when did you start writing songs? I guess the, the first band would have been uh, would have been with Chris, the bass player from Alexis. Uh -huh. um, the first week of high school, we went to go see the Misfits play. Okay. Um, that's that was like the epic. first weekend and now it's kind of like we were we went to the show together we like knew each other we'd see each other like uh we went to different high schools uh -huh. see each other at the bus stop and like take the same bus downtown to go to high school and we both realized we we're going to the show so we went together and then uh i think that show really had like a eye-opening effect on like i've been to a few shows but i had never been to like a larger punk show okay i had no kind of concept of like you know that that kind of world existed that mm -hmm. much and so we went to that show and then like the next after that show that was saturday night the sunday we had like a band practice and uh and that was our first band plan nine that uh um yeah it was just like our first punk band like kind of three chord punk stuff us figuring out how to play with other people mm -hmm. i was supposed to play bass and chris was supposed to play guitar but i couldn't play bass and sing at the same time I could kind of play guitar and sing, so he switched to the bass and I played guitar, which is funny that he's like his he's been a bass player his whole life, but like that's the reason he's a bass player now. Oh, because interesting. like when when we were fourteen, we made that decision really quick. Mm -hmm. And uh we did that for like a few years and then um uh you know i'd met all the other guys in alexis from like you know their other bands in the city and and uh i was put i was booking punk shows in st Catharines and um and uh and then yeah put this band together like with kind of like everybody that was yeah kind of really trying to do it around here uh -huh. and then yeah the rest is history and you guys you were what like 17 were you still in high school when the band started yeah. Yeah, we were we were seventeen. We just turned seventeen, so um, I guess Dal would have like he's the oldest, so he would have just graduated high school. But okay. uh, the rest of us would have still been in high school. Yeah. And you were what touring and and doing? Because well, uh, we were just like we were playing as much as possible. Okay. Um, and then but like we were starting to tour like in my last year of high school, and it was like borderline like how much can I tour without dropping out? Right. <laughs> and, uh, and then I, I luckily I had a really good principal that uh, like took me aside the first day of, of like my last year and was like, hey, I understand this is like happening for you. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm going to talk to your teachers. We're going to like, we're going to get you through the year. Just like work with me and just like, don't drop out. Wow. And uh, yeah, it was a really, it's pretty incredible that he like took the time to do that. And, uh, and yeah, like got me through the year and was like, you know, said something like, you can miss like 33 days. And if you miss more than that, I have to, I have to like legally, uh, I have to like, yeah, kick you out. So like, don't do that. And, 
and yeah, he was he was great about it. And so you, uh, li- you, you missed like what, like thirty two days? <laughs> missed like thirty two days. Yeah. You're like, oh my god, I got one more. <laughs> I only got one more left. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Oh, that's funny. So, the, well, with that, the, the band was already. You know, it sounds like you guys were already doing things, and, and it was moving. How did your family feel about that? I mean, to 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 say, you know what, I'm going to do, this is it. Like I, I'm not going to college. I'm just going to play music and see where this goes. I don't know. I don't think I was really listening to anyone or <laughs> really cared what anyone had to say at that point about anything. So I was go. pretty just like set on doing it. Um, so yeah, I don't know, but we really just hit the ground running. Like we like, we signed a record deal when we were still in high school. Like we oh, signed wow. a publishing deal. Oh, we like made, we like had, mu- we had like music videos, like playing on television, like before we graduated high school. Oh, um, really? So that, cause you told my yeah. brother-in-law about a, a, the video you guys made um, for pulmonary art, art uh, that was done by like a grant system, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and um, so yeah, yeah, that was the first one we ever made. And like our, uh, you know, I know our, our bass player had to like, <laughs> He was supposed to work at Blockbuster that night. And they okay. said, if you don't come in for your shift, you're fired. And so he uh, he went and made the music video. Alexis on Fire went on to make five platinum records. And yeah. Blockbuster has now folded. <laughs> so, he showed them. He showed them already. <laughs> um, but yeah, so like, yeah, that was the kind of crazy thing is at that time, Canada had this grant system for music videos. So we got to make like a very nice music video. We got something like, you know, we got like $30,000 to make a music video. And we, it's a beautiful video. We met this guy, we met this guy, um, Mark Rigadelli. He was like a guy kind of like really involved in like, like Toronto's like kind of like skateboard community. Uh-huh. who have been shooting skate, who've been shooting skate stuff like since the eighties. And so just like as him being an actual like filmmaker, he just took all of that money and just like bought film. So we shot it like on film and like wow. and he made it look gorgeous and and um and yes yeah, so and that video like um yeah ended up getting like a lot of play uh-huh. on like our kind of like music video stations and uh and really kind of like yeah exposed the band to a lot of different people and so by the time I finally did graduate high school and we were able to tour across the country That's for so the cool. first time, you know, there was there was people there when we got to Vancouver. Wow. So like with pulmonary archery, did you know that song was going to be the, the one to do the video for, or was it already a thing that was working or like, did you have a Honestly, demo I out think or we, anything? We, I mean, that would have been from our, our, our first record. So we had the record done, mm-hmm. but um, as far as making a music video or picking like a single, I think um, someone from the label suggested we pick it. Cause it was the shortest song. Okay. Like, like I don't know I don't feel like we didn't feel like there was any like singles like we're we're in a band that was like trying to write I don't know like oh this is going to be the one that does something right like we like like the we like the song but like um the idea of us making a music video seemed absurd Uh the idea of it getting played on tv seemed ridiculous like that's insane it's wild uh, yeah yeah I mean, it's just so, wild that yeah, you there was had not a record really out any... and everything, and this is all happening in your still in high school. So I didn't realize that the record came out because you had a demo right before that, or a, a thing that you guys printed out or did it yourself, and then you did the first record, and that had came out, and this video were all within this time span of you haven't even graduated high school yet. Yeah, it all happens like pretty quick, um, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I think it was. I don't know. We we're just like living and breathing the band at that point. And, mm. uh, and, uh, but yeah, that early stuff did happen really quick. And we were just playing like nonstop, like playing like every single day. Mm-hmm. That's so crazy. Um, with that, I mean, just to talk, to move, cause I, we, my brother did talk to you, my brother and I talked to you quite a bit about the, you know, the first few records and you were doing a film score at the time when, when last time you chatted and, Obviously, you've done big things with Gallows and everything else. Uh, so I want to jump to this new record because 13 years between albums and 20 years as a band, I mean, that's so huge. Uh, tell me about what did the decision to start, you know, putting together an album? Because I know you had a couple singles between the, you know, 13-year records. Yeah, I mean, a few years ago, we, we, we put out a few tunes. Um, but... uh 
I think that kind of just came like kind of like naturally, like the way everything else did. From the time we started playing again, there was just these little things that we were doing, like you know, we'd go do a few shows and like rehearse a little bit, and every single thing we did kind of, I think, was a step a little bit closer to us making this record. Mm-hmm. You know, we were taking things like pretty slow, and but everything we were doing like felt really good. It felt like a little bit better, and it was just like a little bit more positive and yeah, and then felt better. And, uh, but I don't think, you know, there wasn't a plan to like sit down and write a new record. There was just COVID happened and mm-hmm. things were so shut down that we, uh, you know, I just suggested, I was like, why don't we just get together and like jam? Like no one was like seeing each other. This was at a point when everything was pretty locked the fuck down, you know? Right. And so we just got together and played like not, didn't get together to like write new music got together just like play and just kind of had rehearsal and it was just really nice and Mm -hmm. um and especially at that time like when everything seemed so like shut off from the world and it felt like the most normal thing i'd done in months to just like get together at the space and and uh play some music with the dudes and i don't know maybe it was like because everyone's lives have been like ground to a halt with Mm -hmm. the way the world was or or maybe the fact that there was no like plan to do anything um i don't know we just very i don't know songs just started pouring out of us Mm -hmm. and uh you know we had a few and then we had a few more and then after about a month i think we had like seven and we thought, and I was like, we should, went to the studio to record some demos. And uh, we were there, and Dallas was like, you know, I think we started making the record. Like, I think this is the record. Wow. And then it was just kind of the idea of focusing it a little bit and writing the last few over that next month. And so this whole thing came together in a couple months. And, uh, and yeah, just, uh, yeah, I don't know. It just, uh, it didn't feel forced any capacity and we were able to just like have everyone be hyper focused on it and um and yeah i think it's i think it's the best record we've ever made i love uh the songs i've heard thus far i mean sans soleil is the one you wrote the lyrics and everything for that song didn't you yeah that one's uh i mean everything's a pretty collaborative process but that one's more a song that i brought brought to everyone like totally finished and then Uh we like made it a little bit more alexisy sure it was is that yeah. um was that the first song or has that happened before where you brought presented the band with a song like that i think it's the first time i've presented the band with something that's so finished uh-huh um usually like we kind of we all have these ideas and we kind of formulate them together but this was just kind of like something that i yeah i think we did a lot of things differently this time we uh we uh I think like kind of threw out a lot of the old like rules that we had for ourselves when we were making records and uh yeah and it really helped us push into some new territory mm-hmm. I think a, so- a song like Sans Soleil in the past wouldn't have happened because it would have felt like it's too personal like like maybe that's like a song that's like for like because I wrote it and it's like very serious like maybe it'd feel weird for George to sing it or something like that right. it feels like something something we've it's happened in the past but we kind of abandoned those ideas and I'm really glad we did because it's like, um, because I think by, you know, talking about what we want the songs to be and like myself, Dallas and George, like working through the lyrics together on everything. Um, yeah, it, it helped, like it helped elevate everything and it, it helped, uh, help make all the songs stronger and, uh, and yeah, just, and have like a different result than what we've done in the past for sure. Mm-hmm. I mean, having that much time kind of in, obviously in between albums, but like having the time of a pandemic where no one's doing really much of anything. Uh, did you think that that had any effect on the, al- the album at all or the outcome or the songs? I'd say on the album for sure. Just in that. Uh... Yeah, I don't know. It allowed us to almost like felt like we were starting the band again to a certain degree like you know we'd have practice and then we'd just like hang out afterwards like Mm -hmm. no one would be rushing off to like 
go do whatever because because life had like slowed down so much um so yeah i really felt uh it was like so much more casual Mm -hmm. and uh and that definitely helped the writing for sure and i think that definitely helped like the mood of recording too it was like way less yeah way less stressful and i think by kind of having that atmosphere it allowed us to like play better i think it allowed us to be more like open and vulnerable just in the way we're writing and like communicating too which like allowed us to kind of like take some chances creative chances that maybe we wouldn't have stuck our necks out on Mm -hmm. if we weren't feeling like that what was it like going you know going back and and learning all those songs or playing all those songs again probably some that you haven't maybe played live in 20 years i mean i don't know yeah for sure like some i think there's even like one on the record that we never played live so uh yeah it's really interesting to go back and just uh yeah i don't know just like get back into the headspace of you know what we were thinking about music at that time obviously you know feeling those influences coming back there's you know relearning some of the things that you know i can tell i was just like uh you know playing a part and being like oh man i was listening to like a lot of dillinger escape plan calculating infinity at that point or like uh-huh. do something else we're like man we yeah we were really we really love the apple seed cast at this point and so it's cool to kind of like feel those those uh like those influences and just kind of like as a window back into the songwriting at that point and mm-hmm. and also just you know revisiting it when i'm when we're in a different like headspace and obviously my view of songwriting is uh has changed a lot um it's just kind of really interesting to like look at the deci- like the creative decisions in those tunes like a lot of it just a lot of it is that magic of people playing together for the first time not having any basis of reference for anything and just like doing whatever they want and it's a lot of like you know a lot of it seems like as someone that you know has been writing music for 20 years at this point a lot of it seems like so bizarre to me that we would have made those choices but that's what's cool about a lot of it and and um and yeah i think i may have mentioned before we got cut off that you know i was a little worried that it may when we started rehearsing it that it that it may have felt a little uh um awkward to like Mm -hmm. revisit those old tunes like it not exactly representative of where we're at these days but it's been the opposite it's it's made me uh made me like really proud of the fact that that's where the band started yeah i mean it's such an amazing record i mean obviously it holds up to this day you know 20 years later and a lot of the your your band especially and bands that came out of that scene you know the thursdays uh, of the world and like those bands like you go back and listen to a record that's 21 years old 20 years old 21 years old and it's like wow like this is such an incredible album and especially what you guys were doing at the time was so just so innovative and so cool it's just yeah i mean it's just uh for for us it just uh i don't know i guess it was just uh there wasn't that much thought into it. <laughs> right, it just, totally. Yeah, no, it's just starting great. the band. So it's a tr- it's a trip to like look back at it like through a different lens and like you know like appreciate it for what it is because at the time we were just like making songs. Yeah, just 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 <laughs> kids making sure. songs in my mom's basement, in my mom's basement. Yeah, with with like going to revisit them. Um, I know I told you I'd be quick here, but I just I'm just curious real fast. Like going back to revisit those songs, do they change in any way, or are you guys presenting them in any different way, or is it just like we're gonna listen to the recording and then just do it how we did it back 20 years ago? We're doing it uh, pretty much the way it's written, but there's some things I think that we're able to like smooth out the edges in terms of like. I, I in this part like I understand what we were trying to do but we may not have understood how to do it yet because of like our ability mm-hmm. so I think like uh there's probably some parts on the record that we never probably executed properly just because we didn't really know how to play mm-hmm. like that so um uh yeah it's 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 pretty much like what the record is and and then um 
yeah, with a little bit of polish. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And I love your t-shirt. I didn't realize that that's the serenity prayer on your shirt. Yeah. Picked this up the other day when we were in Atlanta. Super cool, man. Um, I it's love a, that. It's a real, I just, it's a real, I just got out of jail, but I'm going to, I'm going to keep it together this time type of shirt. It's good. It's like, yeah. I mean, uh, it's a total recovery AA shirt. I love it. <laughs> um, very cool. Uh, my last question to you, Wade, and I, and I appreciate the time and, and coming back and, and, and jumping on here real quickly um, is if you have any advice for aspiring artists. I think uh, my advice would be to just like, just do it, just make music, play shows, uh, do it all on your own terms and enjoy it. Um, like that's, like that's, um, there doesn't need to be this concept of like making it or, or doing it for someone else. Like if you do it for yourself, like it's already like a victory. You know, there's just like, just be creative and, and enjoy it because that's what ultimately is going to connect with people at the end of the day. And it can lead to some really beautiful things. Bring me the best words.